Nassau Grouper are an icon of the Caribbean. You see them in artwork, they're on postcards, they're on the covers of dive magazines. They're representative of the Caribbean. For most of the year, Nassau Grouper are solitary creatures, each inhabiting its own territory on the reef. But during the winter full moons, the fish gather to spawn. Nassau grouper form absolutely massive spawning aggregations, historically in the tens to perhaps hundreds of thousands. It's just really a natural phenomenon. An age-old ritual, their annual dance occurs at dusk. These days, spawning Nassau grouper have become a rare sight. Primarily because of fishing at spawning aggregations, the numbers of Nassau grouper throughout the Caribbean have declined dramatically. There's so few left that an aggregation of a couple thousand fish is about as large as it gets. Any spawning aggregation should be protected because that's the only time of the year that fish actually reproduce. Major funding for this program was provided by the Bachelor Foundation, encouraging people to preserve and protect America's underwater resources. And by Divers Direct, inspiring the pursuit of tropical adventure scuba diving. Part of the British West Indies the Cayman Islands are located in the Western Caribbean Sea. South of Cuba and northwest of Jamaica, the island nation is made up of Grand Cayman, Little Cayman, and Cayman Brac. Tourists come from all over the world to dive on the spectacular walls and see the diverse reef fish, including the often very tame and friendly Nassau grouper. Divers love fish that are basically like big puppy dogs. They're not frightened of divers. They follow them around. They come up to you and want to rub on you or have you rub them, and they'll just hang with you an entire dive if you let them. So they're just friendly. The Nassau grouper represent to a lot of people what a healthy reef should look like. Groupers are top level predators and top level predators in any ecosystem help to control the structure of the ecosystem. And when you take out the apex predators, everything below them on the food chain gets disrupted. Nassau grouper are found in Bermuda, Florida, and throughout the Bahamas and Caribbean Sea. It is estimated that their population has declined by at least 60% over the last three decades. It's a species that's been caught by fishermen for many years, so you see it more on plates than you see it in the water. The International Union for Conservation of Nature now lists Nassau grouper as an endangered species. We have reached that threshold. We've knocked enough of these populations out that we're now on life support. Every single population that's reasonably large is absolutely critical to whether or not this species exists into the future. Targeting Nassau grouper at their annual spawning aggregations makes for an easy catch, but this has had devastating impacts on the population. There were dozens of aggregations throughout the Caribbean that have been documented that were then subsequently fished to extinction, basically. In places like the Bahamas, for example, they had something like 23 historical aggregations, and they have about five viable aggregations now. Cuba had about 22, and they have anywhere from three to none left. Places like Bermuda that had spawning aggregations, their aggregations have never recovered. 
In the Cayman Islands, the Department of Environment has been studying Nassau grouper since 1986. The initial research helped us to understand that there were declining trends all around, actual catch numbers as well as in the size of the fish. Historically, five spawning sites were known in the islands, but most had been fished to exhaustion. Then, in 2001, fishermen rediscovered an aggregation site or grouper hole on the west end of Little Cayman. This is the last stand. This is the last large aggregation that we know about of this species in the Caribbean. In that first year that the aggregation here on Little Cayman was found, fishermen over the course of about 10 days removed 2,000 fish. And the following year, the fishermen came back and removed 2,000 more fish. So the original estimates were probably that that aggregation had about 7,000 fish on it. And over those two short years, they took out 4,000. And that year, the market got glutted. You know, there's no place for 2,000 Nassau grouper to be used in a small island country like the Cayman Islands. A lot of it's spoiled. And it's basically the case where they just caught so many fish they couldn't sell it. They were catching it because the fish were biting, not because the demand was there. The Cayman Islands Department of Environment, or DOE, was monitoring the fishing on the aggregation. And by 2003, a temporary eight-year ban was established to protect all spawning sites in the Cayman Islands from fishing pressures. That ban was renewed for another eight years in 2011. It takes eight years as kind of the average for Nassau grouper to become reproductively active. And so they thought they'll give them one generation to be able to figure out, are those protections what's needed? To answer this and other questions, the DOE teamed up with experts from the U.S.-based Reef Environmental Education Foundation. Reef conducts research with the help of volunteer scientists and divers. Together, the DOE and Reef formed the Grouper Moon Project in 2002. From the offset, the scientists wanted to know how many grouper attend the annual aggregation and if closing the fishery leads to a recovery of the species over time. When you have thousands and thousands of reef fish on a deep reef and you're trying to count the number of fish that are there, it's quite challenging to do. We tackle that problem in a number of different ways. We tag fish on site with small floy tags that are basically little streamers. So it's a small spear that we use and shoot the side of the fish just below the dorsal fin and inject the tag just deep enough to get it to stay without bothering the fish too much. Those fish that we tag move around enough within the spawning aggregation and mix enough with all the other fish. They're distributed randomly among all the other individuals. So we tag a certain proportion of the population. We don't know what proportion that is. We just put out 100 tags. Theoretically, then afterwards, if we count sets of 50 fish and we see one tag on average, and we do many, many counts like that, and it comes out one tag in every 50 fish, we know that 100 tags would probably represent 1 50th of the total population. So we can multiply 100 tags times 50 and get the entire population. That'd be 5,000 fish. Scientists also count fish in videos they record at the site. One year, they even used sonar to estimate fish numbers. And lo and behold, the numbers came out pretty much the same. Another way to determine whether the population of Nassau grouper is recovering is by looking at the sizes of fish at the aggregation site. So we've been going out there every year since 2004 with a special video system that has a pair of lasers on it that are set 25 centimeters apart and they're perfectly parallel. I put the lasers on the side of the fish and then all of a sudden I have a scale on the fish that I can use to measure. Using computer software, scientists can determine the length of the fish based on the known distance between the two laser points. We go out and we try to measure several hundred fish every year and look at changes in length distribution. And what we've seen with that is that in 2004, 2005, and 2006, length distributions were shifting towards larger fish. 
So the fish were growing in size, but no new young fish were coming in. And then in 2007 and 2008, that link distribution started shifting. And we know, based on the measurements we did, that we still have the same number of big fish. So therefore, we must have a lot more small fish. If we have a lot more small fish, the population is increasing in size. And so we're using that as one way to look at whether or not we're getting more fish into the population. Another key question the scientists needed to answer was where the fish at the aggregation site were coming from. There was lots of theories by the fishermen that the fish that showed up on the spawning sites weren't all from Cayman. They came from other countries, all you know, they came from Jamaica, they came from Cuba, and so the only time that we had to fish them was when they were at the spawning sites. To test this theory, experts put hydrophones around the perimeter of Little Cayman that could receive signals from tagged fish. We basically got acoustic transmitters and we surgically implanted them into the, into the stomach cavity of the fish. What we wanted to do was we wanted to find out the fish that we tagged at the site, are they going back to home reefs around Little Cayman or are they actually leaving and going someplace else? So it turns out that what we were finding was all the fish that were tagged are in fact resident around Little Cayman only. None of the fish actually left. If they're only coming from this island, it means that that aggregation is critical to the local population itself, and it's a time when those fish are most vulnerable. And that's really important information to have when you're trying to convince politicians and decision makers to make decisions that are going to be not universally popular.